I only put batteries in it two days ago and I was very impressed with all the sounds and the noise and everything it does. It's, it's kind of just a cool thing. They say that, um, you know, you're never told to have fun and learn and I'm learning all the time. So, um, in, the, um, in the beginning of the book, um, I, uh, the beginning of the book, in the beginning of the video, I put um, some writing and um, I'm always impressed with people and the, what kind of wordsmiths they are and how good they are when they sort of write stuff. And, you know, you've got only so many words in the English language and yet people come along and they do amazing things. Every time there's a new book with a new way of expressing, you know, actions, feelings, etc. I'm very impressed. Um, I'll discuss that just now. Um, when, uh, when I was small, I went to uh, Leipzigsfle Primary School, or Large School Leipzigsfle, just down the road here in uh, Leipzigsfle. And we were 5% English, 95% Afrikaans. So, of course, you had to know your Afrikaans, you had to learn Afrikaans. And um, one of the things I liked about the school, well, there were a couple of things I liked about the school that I can remember, um, was that um, you had what they called the Lenta dance, sort of a spring dance. And they um, elected a king and a queen and the prince and the princess and everything. And somewhere along the line, I became one of the, the princes, not the king, the prince. And you did dances called Tiki Dry. And... Uh, um, uh, folk spieler, you know, all those different ones that Axel, Name, Diname, Diname, Dina, and where you'd walk in a circle, the girls would go one way, the guys would go the other way, and you'd reach out a hand and go past them, you know, doing this sort of kind of action. And eventually it says, He is made Dina, Didina for me. And the girl that you stopped opposite, boom, that was your partner. You then would dance around. Well, here is my dinner, my dinner, my dinner, and till it stopped, and you would carry on do the exuk na my dinner, dinner, and it was pretty cool. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I don't think they do it in any schools nowadays. Maybe they still do it in some of the African schools. So I would hope so. It was very enjoyable. As a little English lighty, I mean, we wore short pants, no no shoes to school. Um, I used to walk from our house in. Uh, other side of the railway line, Leopard's Lane, all the way out to the uh, primary school. Um, the primary school, the building we used to be housed in now, I think is like almost a police station or something, and the whole area is pretty run down. It probably was when I was young, I just didn't realize it, but it was fine. I mean, we grew up there. I, we moved into the house when I was two, and I only left when I was 22 when I went off to go and get married. Um, I had a great time. I mean, we, I don't know. I had a very pleasant childhood. We did lots of things. We were like during certain times when <clears throat> they had um, athletics at school. All the kids would be out. We lived in a in a block with a circular road going around it and some offshoots in Contact Street. And um, we would all, you know, it would be um, athletics. Boom! All the kids would be out running around the block training. You know, doing all kinds of at at night, no problem. You know. And then that sometimes we would have, um, the craze would be walking, I'm not quite sure, with stilts, stilts. We'd make a blank and hammer blocks of wood on it. You'd be walking with your feet on those blocks of wood. Other times, everybody made um, tin cans, put a hole through it with a piece of string, which you held on each, you know, put your foot on the can, and you'd walk along, you know, with these things, thinking you're the bee's knees. But... Yeah, that's how we used to humor ourselves. My dad had chickens on our little stand. It wasn't a plot, just a little stand. And um, I remember still my brother and I, Glenn, he's about four years older than me. We, um, we took some little dart set we had made with a, with a, a straw. And we used to run around and shoot at these little poor chickens. And I remember shooting one and hitting in the bum and it ran off with my dart behind it. Um, I also remember, incidentally, um, taking the chicken, putting his head down in the dust, his, his head, I imagine, his, her head, down in the dust, and then drawing a line <coughs> from its eyes <coughs> through the sand with your finger, and eventually letting go of the chicken, and the chicken was hypnotized, it would stay there with its head bent, just looking at that line. And of course we thought, pretty damn clever, 
Um, and <laughs> so then uh, eventually, you know, uh, after Standard 5, Standard 6, we went to Cruisestop High School. Um, I was in Standard 6 and Glenn was already in matric. And um, uh, I remember going to a store called Zimmons. It was, uh, we used to call it a native trading store. So I think so, maybe, no, that was maybe the other one just close to us. But they sold all manner of things just behind Leopard's Flair. And I went there to go and buy a bicycle. And there was one that was completely yellow and it had like a smoky black um, all over it. As if you are taking a candle, you know, in the smoke and you left that sort of picture. And oh, I loved that thing and my brother said, no, dad wouldn't like that. You better get the all black one. So I got the all black one and, and it was a rally, uh, Sturmy Archer Gears. And um, it actually had like a drum brake, back brake, big, I don't know much about it, but you know, when you press brakes, it wasn't, it wasn't your normal sort of, well, you did press backwards, but it was cool the way the back brake worked. It wasn't those ones in the front where you pressed and the calipers hit the front wheel. It was, I really was impressed. And of course, it was a duck wheel. A duck wheel means a thick wheel, meaning a fat tacky. So you could ride it through the felt, sand, Everything it was, it was cool. It had some gears, little Sturmy Archer gears, just a lever on the handlebars. You click, 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 click. None of the fancy stuff <clears throat> that you know the the more modern bicycles have got. But I mean that thing served me well. I think I rode it all the way through to the matric, and it was a pretty good bicycle. And of course, Crookstop High is still going. It was, it was great being there. Great being a, a student at this school. Um, I eventually made uh, the first rugby team as a hooker. Why hooker? Because my brother had played hooker. He was a little guy. And little guys tended to play hookers. Then I went um, for tryouts for the uh, Transvaal under 20. And myself and a couple of guys, and we landed up in the first scrum. And it was against the current Transvaal under 20, which was uh, from diggers, I think they were. I tell you what. I've never been a big guy, but these oaks were solid, big, and in the very first scrum, you know, when you press against each other like that, very first scrum when we pushed, my back bent and I, my whole back popped out like this, my feet were in the air, and uh, I just thought, mm, no, I'm, I'm not built for this kind of sport. These guys, they knew what they were doing, big, solid, you know, the Afrikaner guys, and that's kind of when I stopped playing rugby. Um, but hey, you know, still love the game, still carried on watching it. Love to watch them play nowadays. But um, anyway, to get back to what I wrote in the front of the book, uh, of, the, of the video, it's a book, Michael Chabon, okay? And uh, it's from the Wonder, it's called The Wonder Boys. And my wife, um, she loves to go to all the second-hand shops and everything, and we buy tons of books for her because she reads through, you know, a book about this thick. That thick, every day, no problem. Well, maybe two days. So anyway, that's what I wrote in the front there. And as I said, I'm always so impressed with people that they are such wordsmiths. Um, this girl was talking to this guy who was a writer and she said to him, I love the way you write. It's so natural. It's so plain. I'm not sure if that's a compliment, but anyway, it's so plain. I was thinking it's like all your sentences seems as if they've, been, they've always existed waiting around up there in style heaven or wherever for you to fetch them down. And I thought, that's so cool. I mean, I even, you know, underlined it and said, here, I must use that somewhere. I'll find a place to use it. I love it when people use their creativity to, to use the limited amount of words there are in the English language and then still create something totally different from the next guy. My younger son, Dean, he writes and performs music, Dean Risco. You should look him up on YouTube, Dean Risco. R I S K O, and he had words in a song once, which was called. He used to sing about standing on the stage lights, bearing your soul, bearing your secrets to the stage lights, because when they get up and they perform in front of people, they don't really see the audience because of the stage lights. And he used that to to convey the feeling that he's up here, still alone, even though there's people out there, and he's bearing his soul, he's bearing his secrets, and the only any person carrying it is a stage light. Quite, quite touching, quite dramatic, quite 
freaking awesome. But anyway, that's enough for today. Get out there. Have some fun. Go make movies. Go do something. <laughs>